what the song said, how great is our God. That lets me know that we're not worried about what their God is doing, but we're only concerned about what our God is doing. So if your God has done anything for you, you should be up on your feet worshiping right now. Because I saw he wanted to leave us all alone, but the sweet, sweet spirit was in the building, and he wouldn't leave it alone. So right now we're only going to be concentrating on our God. So if your God sit down on him right now. Because somebody in this building is expecting for God to do something for them real marvelous right now. And I stopped by to let you know if you need God to stop by your house, you should be worshiping him right now. If you need God to move in your body and get that infection that's in your body right now, forget what the doctor says, you should be worshiping Dr. Jesus. Because contrary to public belief, the God that we still serve is still a healing God. The God that we Why don't y'all give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning? Yes, Bishop Malone, you did set the tone and I thank you. You did set the tone this morning. Why don't y'all give y'all shepherd of this house a hand clap of praise? Because he is my father in the ministry. And I'm just so glad that my father in the ministry would give a 28-year-old country boy with a big city of worship and praise a chance to come before his people. If y'all would, please, we all just give yourselves a hand clap of praise. Because y'all did not have to be here this morning. But God woke you up and touched you and said, it's time for you to go to church. Giving my pastor, Pastor Harris, the respect that he does, that he does deserve. Would y'all please give the mother of my church who came here with me with a walk in all. Mother White. Mother White, would you just wave your hand at her? Now that's the mother of my church. That's the mother of my church. Will y'all give my wife and my kids a hand clap of praise? Because they did not have to follow me up this road, but for some odd reason, they decided to. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, my God, Lord, just to say thank you right now, God. Thanking you right now, my God, for all that you have done for us in the past, Lord, and all that you will do for us in the near future. But right now, my God, Lord, if you would just let your sheep, my God, let your people, my God, not see Brandon J. Sams, my God. But Lord, if you would let them see your servant, my God, if you would let them see your child right now, dear Heavenly Father, my God, if you would let this message, Lord, that we have prepared for your people, Lord, let it be beneficial for somebody right now, Lord. Because not just me, my God, but everybody needs to hear a good word from time to time, Lord. These and many more blessings we ask and pray in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you would, please open up your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 7. We're just going to read the first three verses. Bishop, I've been doing my homework since we went out of town. Yes, sir. Just to let you know, I have been doing my homework. And thank you. Thank you so much. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation. 2 Kings chapter 7. Starting at the first verse. Elijah replied, Listen to the message from the Lord. That is what the Lord says. By this time tomorrow, in the markets of Samaria, five quarts of choice flour will cost only one piece of silver. And ten quarts of barley grain will cost only one piece of silver. The officer assisting the king said to the man of God, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened the windows of heaven. But Elijah replied, you will see it happen with your own eyes, but you won't be able to eat any of it. Won't y'all give the Lord another hand clap of praise for his word. Today's subject is entitled, I Expect a Blessing. I Expect a Blessing. I Expect a Blessing. Come on now, I can't preach this by myself. Because I know somebody is out there right now and they believe like me by faith that God is getting ready to make a way out of no way. 
You see, I came here looking for those who've been waiting for their season. I came here looking for those who've been waiting for a miracle. I came here looking for those who have been waiting for a financial blessing. Would you just touch yourself and say, I expect a blessing? I expect a blessing. Touch yourself, act like you mean, and say, I expect a blessing. I expect a blessing. Amen, amen. I want you to understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, that faith responds to rightly spoken words. You can tell what kind of faith a person has by the types of words that comes out their mouth. There's a tension in this building between people filled with faith and the other half that are dealing with problems. Look at your neighbor and ask them which one of you. You must understand that problems isn't a bad thing in its place. But we got to be careful, Pastor, because sometimes problems will assassinate faith. Problems deal with limitations when faith deals with expectations. There's a lot of people who are not able to have faith because they got too many problems. Faith deals with stuff that doesn't make any sense. And many of you are about to lose your mind this morning because God has gave you a gift inside of you, but your problem is telling you you're not going to make it. The great English preacher Charles H. Spurgeon once used an illustration between faith and problems. He said, faith can walk 30 miles where, where problems can only crawl three miles. He said, a journey took place where problems wanted to challenge faith. Faith and problems were walking through the jungle and they came upon a large shark infested river. Problems said, I can't go to the other side, but Faith said, I must cross because there's something on the other side that got my name on it. When, when they got to the other side, Pastor, they faced a mountain. Problem said, let's walk around the mountain because that's too much work. But Faith said, I can't walk around the mountain. It's going to take too much time. Let's climb the mountain. And since I'm a man of faith, problems get on my back because the God that I serve is not going to leave me. Faith realized that sometimes problems is excess baggage. Sometimes we got to carry problems where faith can go all by itself. That's why most of us can't shout this morning for our blessings because our problems is telling us it's not going to happen. But for the 20 of you that is in GP this morning, that's filled with faith, I know you against all odds this morning. I know you don't have the best resume. I know you have a criminal record. I know you haven't been the best spouse that you should. I know you've been a lazy church member. But no matter what type of person I've been, I got something inside of me that's called faith. And it's crazy right now. And the people that know you can't see your vision, they don't understand what God has placed in your heart, they don't know how you look so good. But the thing is, I'm not worried about my problems, Bishop. I'm worried about She's going back to school with three kids over 35. They're looking at your problems. You're dealing with faith. There's somebody in here that's been in an apartment. There's somebody in here that's been living in an apartment since in, in 2012. And you're saying that this is the last year that's going to happen. Faith is telling you that there's a house with your name on it. But problem is saying it's not going to happen. Problem is trying to figure out right now why are we screaming and going crazy like we run the lottery when we're broke as four flat tires. We know we broke. I don't need you to remind me that we broke. But my faith says that, but my faith says that I have nothing to worry about. Faith is bigger than my problems. The reason why people think you're stuck up this morning and they look at you crazy because they're looking at your problems and they don't know what kind of faith God has but I came in this morning to talk to some people in GP that know they the bomb and they ain't got nothing. But you got something that's called faith inside of you and you know that God is getting ready to do something new in your life. You got something called faith inside of you and you know that God is getting ready to make a shift on your behalf. You got something called faith inside of you and you know that God is getting ready to turn everything around on your behalf. I'm going to calm down, Mother. We here. Last time I came here, you told me, just slow down a little bit. I see you, Mom. I'm going to slow down a little bit. I'm going to slow down a little bit. Some of y'all are about to go crazy in the overflow because the devil is about to have a nervous breakdown.
some of y'all are about to go crazy right now in the overflow because the overflow is happening right now. Y'all just not believing it. And the devil is about to have a nervous breakdown because the chains are about to be broken. Because the devil is trying to figure out why are y'all coming to church Sunday after Sunday and y'all still catching hell. Problems told you not to come to church this morning. Problems said stay at Bedside Baptist this morning. But faith told you if you come to church you will receive a blessing. Problems said after all the cigarettes you smoked you should have cancer. Problems said after all the malt liquor beverages you drunk you should have the shakes. Problems said after all the one night stands you had you should have HIV. Problems said with that criminal record you have you shouldn't have a job. But I wish I just had had about 20 people in here that would say forget what people think about me. I wish I had about 40 people in here that would say forget about the people that won't encourage me. I wish I had a whole church in here that would say I don't care what people got to say about me anymore. I wish I had some people in here that would say as long as I got faith, nothing's going to stop me. As long as I got faith the size of a mustard seed, everything is going to be alright. There's a man here in 2 Kings, I'm going to get back to the text. There's a man in 2 Kings chapter 7. This is not a far-pitched man, Bishop. This is a man that was living in a famine like many of us right now. He's living in a place where there is no food. Has anybody in there ever been hungry before? But for some odd reason, God still prepared food for you to eat. This man was living in a drought. He's living in a season where nothing would grow. But God tells him, by tomorrow, the drought is over. He says this after the field he planted, no crops would produce. He says this after there were no oranges on the trees. Yeah. He says this after there were no grapes on the vine. Y'all got to forgive me because I see we got too many spectators and not enough worshipers right now. But I came here to make a public announcement that by this time tomorrow, the situation that you're going through right now, it's going to be over. By this time tomorrow, that problem that you're dealing with right now, it's going to be out the window. By this time tomorrow, that person that you need, on the way. That stuff that you're living without, Pastor, God is about to bring an increase in this house right now. And some of y'all looking at me stupid like I got stupid across my forehead. No, baby, that's just faith. And some of y'all and some people in here need to believe by faith that by tomorrow my credit score at Equifax is going to change. Y'all need to believe by faith that by tomorrow my spouse is going to make a 360 degree turnaround. Y'all need to believe by faith that that new key I want when I went to the dealership and the dealer turned me down, he's going to call me back and say, it's, 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 it's yours. Y'all need to believe by faith that by tomorrow that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Now that's faith. Now that's faith. You see, I came here looking for some worshipers that know something about faith. I came here looking for some people that know that the God that they serve is still an on time God. Let's go back to these problems. Problems would tell me to give up, but faith tells me to praise before I get my blessing. Do I have any people in here that's ready to give God some praise in advance before they receive that blessing? Do I have any people in here that know that even while they catching hell, they still gonna give God some praise because they know if God did it for my grandma, he'll do it for me. They know if God made my daddy a man one day, he'll make me the man that he designed me to be. You see, I came here looking for people that's ready to make the devil have a nervous breakdown. And with y'all sitting on y'all feet, I mean, y'all see, I guess y'all ain't never had no hell in your life. But like the old people saying, if you just keep living a little bit longer, hell will come knocking at your front door. But I came here looking for some folk that's ready to give the enemy a nervous breakdown. Because we're giving God praise just for him being who he is without expecting anything in return. So with that being said, I'm going to bless the Lord on Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to give him the highest praise on Wednesday and Thursday. I'm going to fall down to my knees as if I was a Muslim and give him praise on Friday and Saturday. And I'm not going to be ashamed to give God praise. Sit beside people that think they too cute to give God some praise. Because you can't give me what I want. I got to get my blessing from the one that cares. I just came to just talk about a little bit of faith this morning. Okay, it's time for me to go to my seat and go to 46 West. But I want to rise up verse number two, Pastor, because the officer didn't believe what Elijah said. 
And listen what Elijah said. He said, you will see it, but you won't taste it. But then the book of Psalms says, Pastor, oh, taste and see. Some of y'all ain't going to never get y'all blessing. Y'all ain't going to never receive y'all blessing because you don't believe. Can I say this again? As good as pastor preached to y'all Sunday after Sunday, some of y'all need a financial blessing right now. You're not going to receive your blessing, not because pastor didn't install the word in you, but you don't believe. Some of y'all want to go to school right now, and y'all want to become an LPN or an RN so you can take care of your family. You're not going to be able to do it because you don't believe. Some of y'all have been trying to fix y'all marriages for the past 20 years. And I hate to drop this bomb on you, but your marriage is not going to get fixed because you don't believe. That's the all they're going to be able to do is see me and you riding around in our stuff, hating on us. Because we had enough faith to believe that the God that we serve is going to give us a blessing. And y'all should be up on y'all feet giving God some praise right now. But I guess I'll move on a little bit further. But you know what I like about God, GP? God reveals that haters are mad because we got their stuff. Oh, how do we got their stuff? We got hater stuff, y'all, because we believe when they didn't want to believe. We do believe that God would make a way out of no way. We do believe that he's an on-time God. We do believe that he is still in the blessing business. We do believe that he's the Alpha and Omega. We do believe that he's King of all kings. You don't have anybody in here that believes just a little bit? If you believe just a little bit that the God that you serve is still a blessing God, you should be up on your feet giving God the high praise. If you believe that God is going to come through your front door and walk out your back door and touch everybody that's in your house, you should be up on your feet giving God some praise. That's why I ask God to bring me new haters every year. Because my old haters are getting bored. Do I have anybody that know they got haters and they still be smiling at them? You go to work and you know people don't like you, but you still smile at them because you ain't worried about them. The only one you worry about is the one that cut the check. And the one that cut the check ain't your boss in the back. The one that cut your check is Jesus. But pastor, and I'm almost done here, that's why I ask God to bring me new haters. Because my old haters, pastor, they started to get a whole lot born. You see, I want God to so bless us, not just me. I want God to so bless us that when they see us riding in that new Kia, they get sick to their stomach and they vomit on themselves. I want God to so bless us, Pastor, when they walk around our house, they pick up the phone and say, girl, it don't make no sense how God is blessing this child. I want God to so bless us, Pastor, when they see us and I find this out of clothes, they ask, did you get that from TJ Maxx on sale? No, baby, I paid full price at the Mall of Millennium. Y'all just missed it right now. I used to be so myself. But if you start giving God some praise in advance right now, not tomorrow, God is getting ready to come on your behalf. If you start giving God the praise that he deserves, God is about ready to give you that new job. If you start giving God some praise right now, mama, God is about ready to fix your husband. If you start giving God some praise right now, God is about to remove that walker out of the way, and you're going to be able to make them steps that you used to make. If you start giving God some praise right now, you see, God is going to give you everything you ever asked for. So the thing is, Pastor, we got to get out of this thing about self. And we got to start worshiping God in truth and in spirit. That's the fact we forgot about it. We know how to dress up and come to church, but we forgot how to worship Him in truth and spirit. But God is saying right now, if you stop being worried about what the haters say, if you stop being worried about what the haters say, I'll be ready to bless you in a way that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. God said, if I make you, I can do it all things through Christ. But my problem is, Pastor, why is it that me and you the only one that can see the vision? All they got to do is get behind the one that God gave the vision. And when Pastor gets his blessing, the blessing going to fall down upon you. But if you don't want to look with Pastor, the hell to go. I come here to tell you that the God that we serve is sweet and not bitter. I don't know about y'all, but ain't y'all glad y'all serve a sweet God? I'm glad that the God that I serve can pick me up way down. When I was selling drugs, he still thought about me. When you was out there whore he still thought about you. When you was talking about the one selling drugs, he still thought about you. When you was talking about the one that was selling her very own body to pay her bills and you were there by, he still loved you. That's why everybody should be upon their feet giving God praise right now. Because everybody has to get his sin before. And if you know that God loves you, you should be upon your feet worshiping him. If you know your blessing is around the corner, you should just say, Lord, I thank you. Because God is ready to do a new thing with his people. If you God's people, you should be 
stay up on your feet. See, I didn't come to the pump and brag you, but I came in to give you a positive, inspirational word. Because if I need a blessing to some of you, I know y'all need a blessing to self. But if you need a blessing to self, the God said, all you gotta do is start giving me some praise. All you gotta do is have a little talk with me. When you're in the bathroom, you should be talking to me. When you're not going to work, you should be talking to me. If you have a little talk with me, I can do all things. But first you want to look up with me. My problem is we got too much of a fashion show going on. And we don't want to give God the praise. But if we just give him a little bit of praise right now, God says I'm already in the building. Y'all just ain't linked up and connected with me. God is saying right now, if you give me just a little bit of praise, I'm going to deliver your elevated children out of your life. God said if you give me just a little bit of praise, do what you want me to do. But see, God said, it don't matter how I say, give me a little bit of praise. Nobody wants to praise them. So I guess I'm going to praise God by myself. Because I remember when I was on the street, doing this and doing that. For some odd reason, my wife is still here. That's nobody but God. And the truth be told, there was nobody but God in your life. That's why every time you step foot in the building, you should be giving God your highest praise. That's why every time you step foot in the building, you should be worshiping and for you way back then. If Mother Wright can say, I thank God for what he did for me in the morning, we should be saying, I thank God for what he did for me in 2012. And the same God that brought her out of the morning, he's ready to bring you out of 2012. Do I ask anybody in here that's ready to come out hard? Hey, Father, you can't be safe from my heart. Are you ready to come out hard right now? Why don't you just pump your fist and just say, I expect my blessing. Believing in man. 
It's time for us to start believing in the man. And pastor, ain't nothing funny about me, brother. You already know me. Me and you go way back. Ain't, ain't nothing funny about me. But, but when you start believing in the man, God will begin to do marvelous things in your life. It's not about what you've done in the past. It's not about what you might do in the near future. People, it's all about worshiping and serving God right now. I can't speak on this enough right now. Because y'all God saved me. And I'm not one of those ones that like to tell his life story. Because it's not about me. It's all about you. Right now. But if we just start walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus a little more, if we start reading this thing called the Bible, which y'all leave on the table to Sunday morning, God saying you got everything you need right in here. So we need to apply ourselves to Jesus Christ. Come on and give the Lord another hand clap of praise. I'm done, I'm done, Give God a hand clap of praise if you will. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise for the preacher today. Come on, somebody. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Come on, talk to me and say, neighbor. I want it to be human nature for me. Come on, talk to your neighbor and say, I want it to be human nature for me. That I want to be able to praise God. I can't hear you. Come on, tell me. Say, I want it to be human nature for me. That I want to be able to praise God in the midst of my problems. Amen. I don't know about y'all today, but he preached it here today. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, tell your neighbors, I need that to be human nature for me. Come on, somebody, tell them, I need that to be human nature for me. Human nature means it's natural. Tell your neighbor, say it's natural. Yeah, it's natural to love somebody. It's natural to love my enemies. It's, 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 it's natural. You spoke a word to hear the this is I don't know about y'all, but I, I feel pretty good. I feel pretty good, man. Yeah. I do. I feel really, really good. Um, I don't know about y'all today, but God blessed us in here today. We have we have poured out so much this week of ourselves until God showed us today that when you give unto others, I will give right back to you. Y'all hear what I say? Do you hear what I said, Miss Betty? When you have done the best that you can do, when you have done everything that you can do for others, then God will bless you. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Listen. <laughs> I don't know about y'all. I, I, I feel so good. Listen, y'all keep playing too. I, I, I mean, we we're on good time. We started a little bit late today because, you know, we were tired. We were tired. GPWC, I need everybody in GPWC to give yourself a hand clap of praise right now. Give yourself, seriously, right now. If you're sitting here, give yourself a hand clap. Now, I'm going to tell you why you're praising God. Well, why you praising yourself. Last week was like a stressful week for everybody. We had half of the people going here and half of the people going there. And you know what? I'm going to say this because I don't say this about these guys all of the time. It's usually the women that pretty much takes up the bulk of the work. That's usually what happens. And trust me, they did their thing last week. They did their thing last week. But y'all give the men of GPWC a hand clap of praise. Y'all, hold on. Y'all do better than that. Yeah. 
The men were on point. And you know, I'm going to tell you something. I felt 10 feet tall in a 5 foot tall body of yesterday. When I looked around, I seen the men in their black and purple, and then I seen the skeleton walking through. Then when I went back, I seen the women, they were back there doing their thing. And GPWC, you guys are a great church, don't ever let nobody tell you that this is that. Now give yourself a hand, I can pray. Yeah, y'all are right with me. I'm excited about next week because next week is the boys week. It's Father's Day. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Let us pray. Eternal God, Father, we come down to say thank you for our offering. We thank you for everyone that gave. We thank you for everyone that had a desire to give. God, we thank you and we love you. God, we ask that you just continue to bless GPWC. God, we ask that you just continue to bless, bless Little Lake Ware Prayer House. God, we just ask that you just continue to bless the body of Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Listen, we're almost done. Listen, we're almost done. we got a couple of announcements. Um, please, for those of you who forgot to bring your pictures today, please, if you want to participate in the slideshow for Father's Day, please, after church, get with Brother Jeremy where he can let you know what day to bring the pictures or what day to email the pictures or what have you because brother Corey and sister Keisha has a deadline that they have to meet in order to get this slideshow together. Amen? All right, so those three are working together. Now listen, if you expect for them to do their part, then you've got to do your part. Amen, somebody. And y'all know last time the, the show was like really, really good. And they told me this time they're going to take it to another level. So I'm just excited to see how it's going to go. Amen. Um, and listen, listen. It is important that on next Sunday, listen to me now. It is important on next Sunday that you come out and support Father's Day. I'm reading, reading a book right now about fatherhood, and it talks about um, how when it's time for men to be celebrated, the ones that should be celebrating the men, they never celebrate them, but they're the first ones to always talk about them. Okay, y'all didn't, it's the truth, amen. Amen. So you really need to come out for the boys. Let's hear it for the boys, amen. Next Sunday, amen, we're going to, for Father's Day, and um, on Friday, Friday, y'all say Friday, somebody say Friday, Friday, Friday. at 7 p.m., then we say 7, 7 p.m., Friday at 7 p.m., tell your nigga, somebody do the shop, this shop free, free, wait a minute, somebody do the shop free, free, all right, Saturday, I mean Friday at 7 p.m., free, all right, free. You are all invited to come back here to the theater. Tell your neighbor, say you're invited. Tell your neighbor, I expect to see you now. Come on, tell them that's how I expect to see you. Yes, what we're going to do, we're going to have Men of Steel night. Men of Steel. Tell your neighbor, say Men of Steel. You already seen Jeremy been working on the projector. We're going to come in as a family and we're going to watch Real Steel together. 
Amen. I mean, invite people out. Come on, it's gonna be free. Take them and say, it's gonna be free. Yeah, therefore men can bring their families. Uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 uh. the problem with our heritage is we don't know how to do family things. That's what it is. And that's what it is. We think that we're weak if we don't do family things. But listen, I expect to see all of us back here, and I expect to see you invite some people. Say, come on, go to the movies with me. Tell them it's free. We're going to watch Men of Steel, and we're just going to have, we're going to enjoy each other. If we ever want to get our family structure back the way God intends for it to be, it doesn't start outside of the church, but it starts on the inside. Amen. So please mark on your calendars on next Friday. I believe that's the 15th, I believe that is, at 7 o'clock p.m., Amen. We're going to watch Men of Steel. If you've never seen the movie, you're going to see a great movie. Amen. It's if, if you've been paying attention, I preached about the movie before. But if you've never seen it, please, please, please. And what we're going to start doing um, here at GP, GPWC in the near future is at least every two months we're going to have a movie hour. We're going to come in our facility where we rent and we're gonna watch movies as a family because I do believe that a family that prays together stays together, amen? So please support this now. Please tell your neighbor, say support it, support it now. Amen, I'm gonna turn this over to, matter of fact, y'all know yesterday was my birthday. <laughs> All right, yesterday was my birthday, my wife, yeah. Yeah, I got I got my 21 year old car. I got my card now. I'm, I'm leaving now, man. I got my 21 card now. And hey, man, so um, uh, youth department. Okay, y'all got it. Tell your neighbors, we almost done. All right. Good afternoon. Just a friendly reminder that this afternoon we mainly follow the service uh, GPWC Kids World um, Praise Dance Ministry will have a um, rehearsal at New Life Fitness Center. And our annual youth meeting will be on uh, Wednesday, June 20th, um, 6.30 to 7.30 at New Life Fitness Center. And for all youth members, if they can please bring their workout clothes. Again, that's June 20th at 6.30. If I could have all of the GPWC Kids World members, please come forward. All kids, all kids.
Wow. Ah, I ain't gonna let y'all make me cry today. Nah, nah that what y'all think now. Nah, now y'all think I'm gonna get to cry. The devil is a liar. <laughs> oh, it's not over. You gotta go. You gonna cry when you get in the car, y'all. You gonna cry when you get in the car. This is the man. All over there.